Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to part four in our series of Discovering Cold War. Now, what we mean by Discovering Cold War is how to understand the person that we are going against when we are telling them about Islam. Now, we're going to look at violence. What does the Bible say regarding violence? Now, many people are, say that you people as Muslims, you are very aggressive, you you always jihading and always fighting. They don't understand what this word jihad means. They don't understand what violence is. So we don't believe in violence. We believe that being uh, calm and passive and, and loving and protecting. In fact, even nature is, is one of calmness. It's spoken about when we get angry and we get upset, we should splash water on ourselves and calm each other down or calm ourselves down. So we're, we're a religion that understands peace and tolerance. So we're not a violent crowd of people or violent people. However, you do see individuals that might do things like this, but this is not something that is practiced by Muslims generally. This is not our behavior. Like you get good Christians, you get bad Christians. You get good Hindus and bad Hindus. You get aggressive Hindus, you get non-aggressive Hindus. You get aggressive Muslims, non-aggressive Muslims. But our religion teaches us to be people that are kind and loving. However, if something unrighteous is happening and something wrong is happening in, in our country, we have the right to go to war against the enemy of our country. Or if somebody attacks our religion, we have the right to stand up and, and be aggressive, but not violent, but to be aggressive where it needs to be and take the, the equal amount of reaction to whatever the action was against us. If we read in the Bible, we can see that violence is also something that was condoned, but the violence depended on situation from situation. So I want you to take your pen and write under the, in the Bible, preferably like I've done, like I've showed you to do, write there a new section, and this section is called violence. So write there, violence, and then take your ruler, mark something to underline, and underline it, and then we start writing the verses. So the first thing we're going to look under, the, the, under violence is the, is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 20 and verse 16. Now, I'll summarize what happened in chapter 20 and verse 16 of Deuteronomy. People invade an area. These are the promised people of God. They invade this area, and God says they must slaughter everything, cattle, animal, everything. So everything must be slaughtered. Now, we don't practice that anymore because, remember, under each prophet, we follow what that prophet taught us. We learn from the prophets of the past, but we no longer live under the Abrahamic covenant. We no longer live under the Jesus covenant. We now live under the covenant or we live under the laws of the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So we follow his teachings. And we update our teachings. Remember I said last time that when you have a new program, a computer program, it doesn't mean you get rid of that last computer program. You get an update. You get the latest information and you follow that latest information. But it doesn't mean you throw out all the information you had before. You continue to follow that. But under this covenant, that's what was expected from people to do. When they took over a new nation, they must destroy the old one. But we don't live like that anymore. We have a, our religion of Islam is tolerant. In fact, when new nations were conquered by Islamic nations, the people were permitted to, to um, convert. They were permitted to do business, to trade, to, to be part of the community. In fact, they were encouraged to be teachers or lecturers and to teach the people especially if they were brought into the country from another country, they were asked to become teachers in the community. And so you can write these verses down. Numbers chapter 31 and verse 17 is another one that refers to the same point of, of violence. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 to 7. Read, that you'll see the same type of story. There's a justice, there's a crime, a crime and justice dealt with in this. Once that's 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 1 to 7. And then the next one is Joshua. J-O-S-H-U-A, chapter 8, verse 25. Joshua, chapter 8, and verse 25. So we see we've got quite a few here. I'm going to give you one more, and then we can move on to the next section. Um, Psalm 137 and verse 9. Psalm 137 and verse 9. So violence, uh, crime and punishment, these things that crime must equal the punishment, so on. When someone was, uh, was a thief or did something, they stole something, his hand was taken off. So this is not something that we came up with. This is something that was, a, that was brought down through all the prophets. Certain things were changed, by the way. Certain laws were changed. Certain creeds were changed. Certain orders of the way we pray and worship were changed because Allah decided to change them. He, he's the only one who can change the laws. We cannot go and change them when we feel like it. These laws were there written by Allah. So we follow those teachings and the laws that he gave. So some of them continued the whole way through. Some of those laws remained constant the whole way through, right up until today. However, some of them were changed. It's not up to us to go and change those laws and to put our own version and our own spin on things. We have to follow the way Allah taught us. So even we see in the Bible, it says that they, we had to follow it that way. So you find the Bible is a natural process, a natural filtering through. It's a natural procession that leads you to the Quran. So when people say they don't want to read the Quran, tell them from their own Bible, 
Here it says all these things. It tells you that the, the punishment must fit the crime. And uh, it, it's, when it needs to be, you even have to go into war. You have to go into a physical war. So now, let's have a, a look at what the Bible says about something that's more relevant. This is something that will come up more often when you're speaking to Christians. And that is, what is the view of the Bible of Jesus Christ? Was he a messenger of God? Was he the Messiah? Was he God himself? What does the Bible say about the character and the person of Jesus Christ? What does the Bible say about the prophet Isa, peace be upon him? So now you take your pen again, write there. You can write there Isa or you can write there Jesus Christ. Prefer you write Jesus Christ so you don't use the word Isa when you're talking to um, a Christian because he's not going to understand what you're talking about. So you can put there Jesus or the, uh, Jesus Christ or whatever you like. You can put there JC if you want to, if you don't write the whole thing. And you just write messenger of God because we're going to prove to you from the verses in the Bible that uh, Jesus was uh, a messenger of God, nothing more, nothing less. And so the first verse that we find referring to this is found in Matthew chapter 21. So take your pen and start writing down Matthew chapter 21 and verse 11. Matthew chapter 21 and verse 11. Don't turn to it now. You just write it down. You write these things down and I'll read the verses for you. Uh, Matthew chapter 21 and verse 11. And it says, And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. So what did the people say? They said you very clearly. And the multitude said, it meant the whole group of people that were there said, and this is Jesus, the prophet. They referred to him as the prophet. They didn't say this is Jesus, the son of God. They didn't say this is Jesus, the God. They said this is Jesus, the prophet. And so everybody understood that. In fact, we know from looking at history and looking at the study of the, of the Bible that the first time Jesus was thought of as being the son of God or somehow belonging it to the Godhead was 313 years after his death. For 313 years, there was not one manuscript or one piece of paper floating around anywhere that said that Jesus was the Son of God. Everybody understood him to be prophet. In fact, Paul, who wrote 13, 14, and maybe more books of the New Testament, didn't even have an idea that Jesus had been crucified, let alone resurrected, and that he was the Son of God. He didn't even know that. Paul didn't know that Jesus had been crucified, and he didn't know that he had been resurrected from the dead, and he didn't know that he was the Son of God. So this means this was created some other time, much later date, and a much later place. So write down in, your, in the front of your book, preferably you have the Bible, Write down in the Bible, Jesus Christ, messenger of God, Matthew chapter 21, verse 11. Next one, Matthew chapter 13, verse 57. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 57. Write it down. Keep it easy for, you, easy for yourself to find. Matthew chapter 13, verse 57. I have to move quite quickly now. Mark chapter 6 and verse 4. Mark chapter 6 and verse 4 says the same thing. Luke chapter 13 and verse 33. Luke chapter 13 and verse 33. And the last one, Luke chapter 24 and verse 19. When we get from the, back from the break, I'm going to review that with you, and we're going to move on to the next exciting section. I'll see you after the break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. We are looking in the Bible at how we can answer uh, Christians about the doctrines that we find in the Bible that actually back up the truth that we find in Islam, with the truth we find in the Holy Quran. And so what we looked at, we, just before the break, we looked at the messenger of God, and we gave you some verses to look at. And some of the verses were Matthew 21, verse 11, Matthew 13, verse 57. Those who didn't catch it the last time, I'll say it again. Mark chapter 6 and verse 4, Luke chapter 13 and verse 33. And the last one was Luke 24, 19. We saw that these verses, they understood I read to you from Matthew 21, verse 11, where it says, and they saw Jesus as a prophet. The word there is prophet. They didn't see him anything other than a prophet. They understood him to be a prophet. Now, the idea of Christian, while well, we looked at the personality of, of Jesus Christ as referred to in the Bible, the prophet Esau, peace be upon him, as we understand it to be, there's another a doctrine that comes in here, and that's the doctrine of original sin. Now, the doctrine of original sin says that man was born with sin. In other words, because Adam and Eve committed sin and they, they, they ate of the, of the tree of good and evil or the tree of knowledge, depending on who you are and what religion you're following, uh, earth and Christendom, what branch of Christendom you're following, they believed that the sin entered the world because of this and everybody's cursed because of it. However, the doctrine of original sin doesn't make any sense because there's no proof anywhere in the Bible for original sin. So the onus is not for you to prove original sin, it's for the Christian to prove original sin. He must bring the evidence to you and show it to you. Does original sin exist in the Bible? If he can show you one verse, 
then we can take it further. But I have a verse for you that you can use for original sin. And the verse for original sin is found in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. So have a look at that verse. See if, it, if you can see anything in that verse that relates to original sin. And you'll find that it actually helps you to answer them. So the concept of original sin is found um, to be explained and answered very easily to a Christian that, that, that you cannot bear the sins of somebody else. And you find that in Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 20. So it's very simple to see. But remember the onus of, of approving original sin is in, on, the, on the side of the Christian. He must prove to you, or you if you're a Christian watching, please show us where you get this idea of original sin from. This is a concept that was created by the Council of Nicaea. This is something that has been added in that doesn't, is not to be found in the Bible. You cannot bear the sins of somebody else. It would, be, it would be quite illogical. If your father was a serial killer, why must you go to jail for your father? Your father must go to jail for himself, not you for your father. So it doesn't make any sense. Another thing that we often do is uh, at Christmas time, we go through shopping centers, or we go through malls, and we see people decorating Christmas trees. We see them putting decorations up and things like this. The Bible actually forbids you from doing it. And so you can write this here, forbidding for decorating Christmas trees. So you can write there, do not decorate Christmas trees. And there you can write, uh, right there, do not decorate Christmas trees. So when you meet Christians and they say, but we do this out of a celebrating Christmas, this doesn't even come from Christianity. It comes from Buddhism. But that's a topic for another time. But what you can do is you can write here, do not decorate Christmas trees. And the verse that you get, Jeremiah 10 and verse 2 to 5. Jeremiah 10 verse 2 to 5 where it says, do not decorate any trees of any sort. So this is they knew that people were doing that at this time. People were celebrating uh, pagan rituals and by doing these things just like an Easter, um, painting Easter eggs and all these things. These have got nothing to do with Christianity. All these are pagan rituals, pagan, pagan sacrifices. So there are three grades of evidence of whether the Bible is the Word of God or not. There needs to be three grades of evidence. So what we're going to do is we're going to write in here in the front of the Bible, there are three grades of evidence. There are three grades of evidence. So write there three grades of evidence and put that in the front of the, of the Bible so it's easy for you to speak to them. So what are these grades of evidence that we need to, to prove whether the Bible is in fact the Word of God? The first one is found in Deuteronomy chapter 18. So what you can write so long while I find Deuteronomy you just write there, you write there, three grades of evidence. The first grade is the word of God. The second grade is the word of a prophet. And the third grade is the word of a historian. So there's the first grade is the word of God. The second one is the word of a prophet. And the third one is the words of a historian. So we're going to look at these three grades and see what the Bible says regarding these, these three grades. So the first one is in Deuteronomy, and it's found in chapter 18. It's an easy one to remember, Deuteronomy 18.18. 18. So Deuteronomy 18.18 18 says, I will raise up from you a prophet from thee of your brethren, like unto thee, and I will put words in his mouth, and he shall speak them, the words, as I command him. I will raise up amongst you a prophet who will speak, and I will put into his mouth the words that he must speak, and he will be from amongst you. Where will he be from? Will he come from a spaceship? Will he just land on planet Earth? Will he grow out of a plant? Will he be uh, evolving? No, he'll grow from amongst you, from a person who was just born just like you are. And we find that this has happened. The prophets have come, all of them, even uh, the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came from a normal family, normal. He grew up just amongst the people, just like everybody else. The prophet Isa, peace be upon him, the same story, grew up from amongst them. He didn't come out of a spaceship or just land on planet Earth. He grew up amongst the people. And so... The the first group, the first type, you can write there, you can take your pen, and you should have there the three grades of evidence, and it should be number one, the word of God, number two, the words of a prophet, number three, uh, words of an historian. So now we go to number one, and we put there the first type. The first type are those who are prophets that are sent with, with words that are grew up amongst the people. The words will be put into their mouth, like we read in Deuteronomy 18, verse 18. So right there, Deuteronomy 18, Verse 18, Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 18. The next one is Isaiah 43 and verse 11. Isaiah 43 and verse 11. And I'm going to write that down so you, you also write it down. Isaiah 43 and verse 11. Now these are the first type that fits into the first category. The words will be put into their mouth 
They do not speak on their own behalf. They speak on the behalf of Allah. Allah puts the words into their mouth. They do not speak on any of their own behalf. And they grew up amongst the people. The second type. So right now, the second type. The second type is found in the New Testament. And we can find that in Mark chapter 12 and verse 29. So right there, Mark chapter 12 and verse 29. Mark chapter 12 and verse 29. And it says the following. And Jesus answered him, uh, The first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. Here is the greatest commandment, I tell you. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord your God is one. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. He's getting it over and over again. We looked at the first part of the series. and the second part of the series, when we looked at this, we said that, that all, the, all that Allah wanted the prophets to say is to show that there is only one way to Allah. There's only one way to God. And that is to say, La ilaha illallah. See, it was very, very important. And here it's very clearly said. So the second type is the type that... You, the words of the prophet and this is what the prophet says on his own behalf the first half they speak and it's the words of Allah speaking through that prophet brings the word of God now we see the prophet actually saying if you want to understand God you need to recognize that there's only one God so we see that now the second type is the one who declares that there is only one God he's the type that will bring you closer to God so you can write these verses down and it's very important to show the Christian this not only does the prophet not speak on his own behalf but when he does speak on his own behalf, he refers you back to rule number one, which is, I speak on, on, on the behalf of Allah. There's only one God. So write down Mark chapter 12 and verse 29. You can also write down Mark chapter 10 and verse 18. There are many other verses. I'm just going to give you two to, to speed up the, the time. We haven't got much time. So just to speed it up a bit. Then there's the third type. Now the third type is the most common kind. And so what I want you to do I want you to write down Mark chapter 11 and verse 13. So look at Mark chapter 11 and verse 13. Mark chapter 11. Just don't, don't look at it. I'll read it to you. And what you do is you just write it down for, to speed up time. Uh, Mark chapter 11 and verse 13. And you can also write down Matthew chapter 9 and verse 9. So Mark chapter 11 and verse 13, it says the following. It says, And seeing a fig tree afar off, and having leaves, he, uh, he came. Okay, Mark chapter 11 and 13. Mark chapter 11 and 13. It says that there's the third type, which is the most common type, that he speaks from history. So what he does, he refers to things that happened in the past. He looks at things that happened in the past. And so what he looks, he, like the, the description here is between the leaves and a fig tree. And he describes how the country has dried up and, and uses references to what the people would have known at the time. So what it does, sometimes they refer to things that were commonly known amongst the people and says, this is an analogy of what's going to happen to you. In other words, if, uh, if, if you don't bear fruit as a Muslim, if you don't bear fruit as a Christian, you'll be cut off and you're thrown into the fire. This is an analogy of what would happen if you do not keep to the truth, if you do not continue to follow the truth. So you see there are three types. There are three types of grades of evidence of whether uh, a person is a follower of God or not. Now, we find that, the, that all the prophets follow these grades and they have these grades in them. So, the Old Testament was written during the time for the people so they'd understand things. The New Testament was written during the time of the people so they'd understand things. And the Quran is written during the time for us to understand now. It's not a book of history. It's a book of, of now. It's a book of today. So, we look at the Old Testament and the New Testament. We see that they're forerunners. They tell of what's going to come. They point towards the Holy Quran. And they say that the Holy Quran is going to lead us into all truth. They point in that direction. They talk about one that will come and lead us into all truth. And so even Jesus himself said, that after me, one will come who will lead you into all truth. And we found that the Quran fulfills that requirement. So you can write these things down. Now, was the Old Testament written during the time of Moses, for example? The lifetime of Moses was the, 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 the books that are ascribed to him uh, written by him? No, they couldn't have been because we find that in the book of Moses talks about him being dead. And, and buried and were taken away into a place where he was buried. How could he have written uh, his own death and, and his own uh, obituary column? So we know that there, many of the books were not written by him. And we find that the same sequence going through the whole of the Bible. Many of the books of the Bible are given, said they were written by such and such a person, and we find later that it could not have possibly been. Like we saw before in other previous episodes in the series that I have, been, have had the privilege of uh, giving on Peace TV, We've seen that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, some of them were written 60, 70, 80 years 
after they died. So, uh, before, so it was impossible for them to have written it. So we see even in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, many of these books are said that those are the people who wrote them. They say Matthew wrote this book, Luke, John, they wrote these books. But we find out that they died 60 years before they wrote the books, or 70 years or 80 years before they wrote these books. So it's impossible that they wrote them unless they were resurrected from the dead, came out of the grave, and then wrote them. So we need to ask ourselves, is the Bible, and this is what you need to write down, is the Bible the inspired word of God? In other words, did God inspire this book to be written, or is it man's writing? So you can write there, as we go before, we, the next section as we go forward, is, is the Bible the inspired word of God? So this is the next heading. Take a ruler and cross it out. At no place in, in the Bible does the Bible say that this scripture is the Bible. It doesn't say, hello, I am the Bible. The scripture never identifies itself as the Bible, never identifies itself as the word of God. Never says, this is the word of God and you must follow it. So, in fact, what we do see is that it says that the scripture is inspired by, the, is inspired, is, is, the scripture is inspired but it doesn't say it is inspired word of God. Nowhere does it say it is inspired word of God. Now, I can be inspired to paint a painting, but that doesn't mean that God is behind it. You see, I can be inspired to create something or recreate something, but that does not mean God is behind it. So nowhere does it say that this book is the inspired word of God. So you can write that down as well. And you can probably put there Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And I'm not going to go any further with uh, this today. I want you to to have a quick recap of what we've done today. And next time in this series, we're going to have a look at Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. You could do some homework for next week or the next time when this program is on, and you'll be able to have a look at it and have an idea where we're going to go. So what we did today is we looked at how the who the messenger of God was. We looked at how you cannot decorate Christmas trees and how it's forbidden. Uh, we looked at the three grades of evidence. And we saw that these are the requirements that people need or that true prophets should have and the follower of Allah should have. So Islam is such an easy religion to follow, and it's so much simpler than following what we read in the pages of the Bible. But what we're doing is we're trying to find verses in the Bible to help people to become Muslims. So I hope you enjoyed today's program, and inshallah we will meet again soon. And from me, Arib Islam, Assalamu Alaikum.